Have you ever wanted to make this? Or this? Hey lads, welcome back to the channel for another video and this looks a bit different, doesn't it? So while I was scrolling through the comment section on some of my videos the other day, I discovered a couple of comments that were asking, how do you get those cinematics that you do in your Assetto Corsa videos? And that's what I'm going to show you guys today, how I personally make these cinematics. So without any further ado, Let's just jump right in. So first things first, you're going to need a replay. Now, I would recommend that you have your replay settings set at the highest quality that your PC will allow. And the way to find out this is if you go into your settings, go to a set of Corsa at the top here, go to miscellaneous, and look at the tab replays. Now, obviously, I've got my replay quality set to ultra, and the maximum size it'll allow is 2,000 megabytes. Next, what I'm going to show you is the video settings that I would recommend you do. Now, it depends what you want for this. With some of my videos, I like to make a video that's in 60 frames a second, so I'll do the cinematics in uh, 60 frames a second. However, if I'm doing a video that's entirely dedicated to the cinematics, then I like to do that in 24 frames a second because it gives it that proper movie-like look. So for example, with some of my Power vs. Agility videos, you'll see that the cinematics are in 60 frames a second, but with my my stream intro, for example, that'll be in 24 frames a second because the, it, it makes a huge difference. And the higher the frame rate, the cheaper the video actually looks. So what we're going to do is we're going to limit our frame rate to 30 frames per second. That's as low as it will go. However, there is a way around this, and that's just a simple case of record your video in 24 frames a second. Whatever you use, OBS, Elegato, just record it in 24 frames. So now you can probably see me now, it is 24 frames a second, it's not as smooth, but it's it's got that nice motion look. So we've got all of our video settings set just how we like it, and the frame rate sorted for that cool cinematic look. The next thing you're going to need is a tool for the content manager, or a mod for that matter. So the software that I'm going to recommend you get, link in the description, is Drone Camera. Now Drone Camera is an excellent must-have tool if you're going to be making cinematics like the ones we're going to be making today. The reason why I suggest you use Drone Camera is because you can hook up a Xbox controller or gamepad and basically it allows you to use the camera in-game like a drone so then you've got full control because using it on your keyboard is arguably far more difficult now when you're on this page the way to make sure that you're getting the latest version i mean obviously you can just click download right there but sometimes it can give you a previous version but just in case that does happen what i suggest you do is you go to history and then look for the earliest update and just hit download so now that we've got that downloaded all we have to do is just drag and drop into a set or Corsa or content manager and it should pop up here install and there you go you now have drone camera installed once that is installed all you have to do next is come to content come to miscellaneous and then look for the add-on drone camera and then make sure it is activated. If this isn't ticked, then it's not going to work in game. So now that we've got all of that sorted, we can now jump into the game and start making our footage. So we shall just so we'll jump right into one of the replays. Now everything does look a little bit jerky right now, but that is it is for good reason because I am recording in 24 frames. Okay, so here we are in the replay. We just want to make sure that we've got drone cam enabled. And these are the settings that I use for my drone camera. Once you've got the settings that you are comfortable with, then you shouldn't ever need to touch these ever again, especially on this page. Now, in order to activate the drone camera, if you look at the top there, it, says, it tells you a button in reference to what controller you're using to enable it. So for me, on my Xbox controller, it would be this little button here. Now it is enabled, and you may have noticed that it's gotten very blurry, and that's because the depth of field is going crazy. It does this, do not worry, it is not buggy. Because the depth of field is already enabled, all you have to do is either turn it off, or just hit the button that focuses for you, and then it'll bring it back to normal. But now, if we look here, we can move the camera around like it is a drone. So if you, if you look here, I can just move around like so. On a quick side note I would like to mention, OBS does struggle a little bit with Assetto Corsa. I don't know what it is, I think it's due to system requirements, but there is a 
kind of cheat way around it. When it comes to the replay, you don't actually have to have your game selected in order to play it. And I found a way to make the output and footage a lot smoother is to have my OBS selected. So it should run a little bit smoother for me. But right now my game is not selected and I'm able to move around. There is a little bit of a bug with the audio if your game is not selected. So let's make our way over to our car over here. Now all of the controls are fairly self-explanatory. On my Xbox controller I've got the buttons X, Y and B. They just give you different motions as to what the camera is doing when following the car. So if I press Y for example, that turns all of them off. That means when the car moves, it will not, the car will not follow. So this is my car, and because I've got follow car disabled, it should just drive off without me. That Mazda is gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, there we go. So now it is just driving away without us. Also, if you've got follow car disabled, whatever your car is nearest to, when you re-enable follow car, it will attach itself to that car. So if you want to film your car, make sure that when you enable follow car, it's on the car that is nearest to you. So let's bring my car back. So what I'm going to go over is just some simple like camera angles and views that look really good on camera. So right now the, the replay is paused and it's, it's, fa it's looking fairly bland and such. No big deal. The way to conquer the way the game looks is to use the D-pad. That'll change the zoom. Obviously, the closer it gets, the depth of field behind gets a lot stronger. You can turn off the depth of field, but it does look a little cheaper. So if you enable the depth of field, it gives it a little bit of a crisper, nice cinematic look. Now, some of the camera angles that I like to go with, or camera movements, is I like to go for the, uh, a, a low down look, looking down. Uh, with a wide field of view, like this one. Bearing in mind, you can change the depth of field, by the way. You don't have to just rely on autofocus. Now, this shot we're going to do is just the simple pan dolly. So what that basically involves is if I just slowly move the camera, but you, and with the, the camera settings that I've got, you've got to be very gentle on the thumbsticks. But uh, this is what I like to get one of these shots in when the car is stationary. And it looks rather nice. It's not, it's a bit off center, so let's just uh, correct that real quick. And it's nice to get multiple shots of these kind of kinds of things. So we'll do that again, but with a bit more zoom in. Nice low down angle. And away we go. It's got to be very gentle on the controls. And that looks very nice. Obviously, and also the triggers, they'll, they'll move the camera up and down. Uh, the little bumpers, they'll rotate the, the camera, so it triggers height, the bumpers rotate. Now you can be very creative with these kind of things. Let's try the same thing again, but from a, a higher angle, a bit more zoomed in, and just uh, get that focus right, get it nice and crisp, just move it across like so. Oh yeah, that looks, re that looks pretty good. quite pleased with that. I should also mention something very quick, that the time of day that your game is set to is actually rather important. If you've got it set to like between 11 o'clock till 4 in the afternoon, it doesn't look that great. It looks really like very harsh lighting. Whereas I like to film in the like the happy hours of like the filming days where there's a very limited space of time. So that's between 5 p.m. till 9 p.m. where the sun's setting or even uh, 7 Oh, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. This light looks pretty good as is and you can even do these kind of pans in just one direction. So for example if we were to focus entirely on that headlight right there, get the focus nice in frame and then we just move to the side and you just move left. Now again you've got to be very gentle with this kind of thing. So that's See that's too fast for me. Much slower, much nicer. And you can do this with any car in the game that you want. You can turn the FOV crazy high and get some really good macro shots, which always look great. What I'm going to just do real quick is just change the time of day because then it looks really pretty then. Oh, it's 5.30. There we go. That looks real nice. But if you get your motions right and you get the depth of field right, it's very difficult to make anything look bad. Very nice. I like that. Altitude lock is a very uh, important thing as well. If you look on the uh, the controller there, basically I can move to the right like this, but if I was to disengage altitude lock, it would just go straight down. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is just do some things in motion. 
So what I'll do is I'll just, I'll follow up my own car. So now that I've got follow enabled, should be moving soon. Yeah. So now the car moves. This is the sound bug that you've got because it just, like, the sound doesn't keep up when you've got o uh, OBS enabled. So we're flying through. Now, you may notice that it looks kind of gimmicky. Like, the camera's just fixed in one position and it doesn't look that great. I mean, yes, you can, you can fly the camera around, but you can just tell that it is just a camera. You can, for instance, put yourself on a, in a different part of the map and just act like a full-on cameraman, like so. So here I come in, just acting like a normal cameraman. I'm doing all of this camera work. And there we go. You don't even have to focus on the car itself. So, if I was to just leave the camera in this position right here, you can tell it's just locked on, and it doesn't look that great. So, remember when I told you about the other options using X and B that are to do with the camera movement when it comes to following the car? If I was to tap B, that means the car would rotate without being locked on. So, you can see a difference there. It's still locked on, but the car's able to rotate now. If I was to enable that again, it's just completely locked in position. So, I'll show again once up to this corner. So here we go, camera's locked, camera is locked, it's still locked, and now enable. And now it just moves freely. And this alone allows for some very pretty shots that you can make. I mean, this is all within control of the drone camera. With the lock, with the camera lock, you can also stick the camera on the side of the car like this, like it's a GoPro. So basically, you just lock the camera to the car and then turn the FOV right up so it gives it that nice fisheye look. You get some really nice, like, good GoPro, like, looking shots with this kind of thing. And it's good. And you can have a lot of fun with it because you can just change cameras straight away by flying to different areas. You can even do interior shots, but I would I would recommend having the, the camera locked because you can see everything that's going on here. You can see the RPM, you can see the gear that I'm in, even the lap time on the, the dashboard. It's just a very good bit of kit, this, but you can fly around the, the cockpit and anything you want. My favorite kind of camera angle is the super low down one that's from the back. You can have a lot of fun. Making videos like this just looks so much better than your standard, regular, uh, in-game replay cameras. Here comes an Oreca. And this conveniently brings us on to our next point. If you wanted to give it a full-on natural look that isn't cinematic, but it looks like a cameraman, what I would recommend doing is having a camera car. Now, what is a camera car when it comes to this kind of thing? Basically, you are using the movement of another car to attach the camera to while you film your car. So let's just jump forward into the race so I can demonstrate what I mean. So right now, I am following my car, but I want to, f I want to be the one that films my car. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lock myself onto Jean Anier. So now I am locked onto the AI's car. Now, I'm not locked onto any position from my car. I would prefer it if my car was a bit closer, because this would have demonstrated greatly what I wanted. And this also works if you want to film two cars. If you're having a battle with someone, it is nice to have another car that's around you, so you can film the battle from a third car. So, for example, those two Ferraris, I mean, this Aston's a bit far away at the minute, but those two Ferraris over there, is a great example. And now finally, for one of my favorite things to do in some cinematic videos is to get actual establishing shots. The track mod that I've used of Surface Paradise isn't a great one because you can see there's bits over there that's that need replacing. But if you get creative, hang on, if I go just down here a little bit, the way to do it is just get standard drone shots. Have this as like your establishing shots kind of thing. And all you have to do is just get the camera up high, get it nice and level, and then you just push forward. And don't forget, you can zoom the camera as, like, pretty far, but do be warned that the uh, the camera gets a little sensitive. This is a, this is a shot I like to pull off. Is the, the, the slow pan down while cars are coming into play. I like doing this kind of thing. Uh, I did pick a really rubbish area to do it in, like. And still, you can even incorporate the pans that I showed you earlier. camera's not necessarily focused on anything, it's like a static camera, but it is moving. And it looks really good. So, with all of those tips and techniques behind, here is what I'm able to do in just this replay. <laughs>
I hope you have enjoyed this video, hope it's been a bit informative for you and hopefully you guys can actually do some pretty cool cinematics yourself with these tips and tricks. As always guys, um, if you've enjoyed the video I would actually appreciate you if you hit the like button. It would help me out a lot and it would actually help, you know, recommend these kind of videos to other sim racers. And if you want to see more videos like this then why not hit the subscribe button. And as always why not check out these lovely guys over there on the right hand side of the screen. These guys provide for me all of the equipment that I use and they've been really good to me. So so be sure to go and be good to them. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you guys in the next race. Have a good night everybody.